I've had to like take deep breaths before I make this video so that I don't get too emotional, you know, because I realized at some point my body and my head started buzzing a little bit. Let me start with some disclaimers. First and foremost, um, this video I'm about to make is not speaking to all white South Africans or white people. Um, it is speaking to, I'd like to think the majority because I do fundamentally believe based on my experience from what I've seen from just general behavior. I do believe that the majority of white South Africans are racist towards black people in particular. There are many, 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 many white people who I believe are either fully non-racial or they try their best to not be racial. So they might have like undertone racism that they are currently working on because they are trying to become better people, trying to get along with everyone. And for those people, I appreciate you. I myself deem myself a non-racialist and I understand that I can only say this because I am privileged, because I don't live in a shack, because I don't earn a grant, because my life is relatively comfortable, you know, so I can't speak for the majority of black South Africans because I do not fit the criteria to be the average black South African. My life's comfortable. I've lived with white people my whole life. I've got white friends. My white friends have invested in some of my initiatives. Um, yeah. Another disclaimer is I have not watched the ENCA, I think, interview with Andre De Reiter, the now official ex-CEO of ESCOM. Um, his contract was, was, was cancelled with immediate effect, I believe, yesterday after he did the interview. It was meant to end in March. He resigned last year. It was meant to end end of March, but with immediate effect now. They're like, get out of here because... I know Praveen Kordan said something ar around Andre Tereta is not meant to be getting political about his work at ESCOM and, and I haven't watched it. So if you've watched it and you have whatever opinions which are different from mine, I haven't watched the interview. I will make time to watch it at some point. Um, I need to highlight, as I said, I have, I think, quite a few white friends, some Indian friends, a lot of colored friends, of course. Um, I currently contribute... 100 rand a month to Afri Forum. Um, I understand and I believe that the majority of Afri Forum contributors probably are white racist people. I understand. The reason I contribute to Afri Forum is because I really appreciate and support the work that they do. I've met some of the leadership. I've met, met Aaron's Roots. I've met Aaron's Van Sale, a very young, visionary, intelligent, hardworking white Afrikaner um, gentlemen. Um, I look at the building of Soltech that they did with Solidarity, which is a skills institution. I look at the work that is done patrolling the borders of South Africa, which the South African government has really failed at. Um, I look at some of the community work they do, largely, obviously, in white African spaces, because that is the bulk of their contributors. I look at some of the work they did helping the Senzo Meiwa family in trying to get justice some of the work they've done in the free state with the royal family there that was not recognized. And some of the other work they continue to do to try and make South Africa a better place. I contribute to Gift of the Givers as well, led by Imtia Suleiman. I am not Muslim. However, I understand that it was founded by a Muslim group and it has Muslim principles that guide it. So that's me. And that's my disclaimer. So if you feel I'm a sellout, I love white people, as people do, it's fine. As I said, I've got white friends. Some of them, of course, being um, third generation wealth of the Herzog family in South Africa, Rob Herzog, who's become a friend of mine. He's got his own political views. He supports the DA, which I do not, etc., etc. He's a mate of mine. However you feel about him is your opinion and you are entitled, but he is my friend. I know some people are like, well, he's your friend, but you're not his friend. That's your opinion. You know, my relationship with him is a personal relationship. We also have a social media relationship. And that's fine. I've got similar relationships with other white people that you do not know, who may be well off, who may not be well off. I've got similar relationships with many rich black people, which you may or may not know, and some other middle class and poor black people, which you may or may not know. It is what it is. I believe I'm an independent thinker, I'm a critical thinker, and I have my own opinion. I think I've covered the general basis. This message is officially to the majority of white South Africans and anyone else who maybe 
is going to learn from this message. I'm currently angry and I made a tweet. I wrote a tweet uh, yesterday and I see it's gotten quite a bit of traction and high, em highly emotional responses where I was saying the fact that white people are still blindly defending the Democratic Alliance, the DA, and Andre Tareta, who is now the ex-CEO of ESCOM, makes me understand why the majority, or it makes me not fault why the majority of black South Africans will continue to vote for the ANC and probably the EFF. I understand. And then I think I end off by saying something like, the rest of us now have to suffer because of this. As I said, the majority of white South Africans, I believe, are racist. My opinion. I believe the majority of black South Africans are racist. And I don't like this argument of black people cannot be racist. Per definition, if you discriminate against someone based on their race, that makes you racist. The fact that you're discriminating against someone who's rich, who's powerful, who is a legacy, who has inherited and has privilege from racism and colonization, that is not important. That comes secondary. But you are faced as a black person, select someone, hire someone, invest in someone, and your thing is, I will not support that person because they are white. That makes you by definition racist. I will vote for this political party. I will not vote for that political party because they are white. That makes you a racist per definition. So I believe the majority, overwhelming majority of black people in South Africa are racist from voting in terms of their anger of the legacies of apartheid and colonization. Sadly, <laughs> funny enough, and this is what Franz Fanon calls cognitive dissonance. Sadly, black people are not racist when it comes to where they want to send their children to school, which hospitals and private health care they want to use, when it comes to the businesses they want to support. There, black people are non-racial. There, black people will support whoever is the cheapest, whoever is the most, gives the best quality products, etc. And that leads, of course, to the continued oppression of black people. The fact that black people take their money and they buy from white Indian Chinese businesses, even if those white Indian Chinese businesses hate black people. And then when it's time to vote, they will vote for a black party, an ANC, an EFF, an IFP, which is probably funded by wealthy white people who have white biased racial agendas. But this is part of the cognitive dissonance and the uh, hypocrisy of black people. To the white South Africans, this message is intended to. You guys are highly detached from the realities of black people in this country. You have never lived in a shack. You've never lived in a township. You've never felt racism from a, a rich business person, from a coach, from a space. You've never experienced it. You don't know what it feels like to suffer from black skin. You speak from a place of privilege. Oh, look at what the ANC is doing to ESCOM. Look at what they're doing to state-owned enterprises. They are so corrupt. Uh, I can't believe people will vote for them. You are right. But you're speaking from a place of privilege. And when you try to connect with black people, whether it is the middle class or the poor, you completely lose them when you are inconsistent. When the Democratic Alliance is caught out for corruption, when the Democratic Alliance has been exposed for catered deployment, hiring people that are not qualified, a John Stianese that didn't have matric, all of a sudden your argument changes, it shifts. That is racist. You may not know it, but it is fucking racist. Yo, but look at the Western Cape. Look at what the DA has done in the Western Cape. No, that's bullshit. You cannot point to spaces where rich white people live and rich white people have benefited from British colonization, from Afrikaner apartheid and say, look at what the DA has done. I can similarly do the same and say, look at Santon, look at Umsham, look at any other Lani neighborhood that is not in the Western Cape and say, ah, oh, look at what the ANC has done. That is not an ANC victory. That is rich people that have managed to build a great space. They have private security, they have private healthcare, they have private schools, and they force government because they have the money, because they fund these people to keep those spaces clean. Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of South Africa and the ANC, 
lives, I think, in a Hyde Park Sandhurst site. He lives in that area and it's clean and it's lawny. But he's an ANC guy. So, oh, look at what the ANC has done. No, bullshit. That's fucking money. Can we look at what the DA has done in colored spaces in the Western Cape? Can we look at what the DA has done in black spaces in the, in the Western Cape? Because I can tell you, I grew up in KZN, KwaZulu. I've visited the Eastern Cape. I've visited Gauteng, Mpumalanga, the Free State. And I can tell you firsthand, I was born in 1986. I have seen neighborhoods move from um, Gravel Road to Todd Roads. My own grandmother, Egvugen, I used to visit her and we used to shit in a bucket. I used to visit her sister, Washati, and we used to shit in a long drop. And today there are flushable toilets there and they are Todd Roads. And they now have RDP homes, decent homes, because my grandmother used to live in a hut and there was a shack at the back, which was the kitchen. My grandmother's sister, the same, and all these other spaces I've visited. I've seen clinics being built. I've seen schools being built. Not a lot, but I've seen schools being built. I've seen black children go from a place where they had parents and grandparents that were illiterate to having a matric to thanks to NSFAS getting a tertiary education to today going to work. They are lawyers. They are engineers. They are bankers. They are administrators. They are doctors. They are school teachers. They are nurses. And to them, it is thanks to the ANC government. I do not like the ANC government. I appreciate what they have done in the past. I appreciate the fights that they pushed and led during apartheid. Them, the PAC, the IFP, and other black liberation movements, including the black consciousness movement led by Stephen Bantubigo. I appreciate them. I appreciate them very much. But from 94 to today, you can see the agenda, which is not a black agenda. The black agenda is we want the land that was taken during apartheid to be given back to black people, not bought, not begged for, but given. This land was isolated by the apartheid government and black people were forcefully removed. So as a black leadership group, isolate the same land and give black people that land back. The ANC has failed, number one. Number two, the ANC has failed to capacitate black business. Number one, from a skills perspective, teach young black children how to run businesses and do this through the schooling system, do it through mainstream media, and now we have social media, do it through that and empower black children on how to run businesses so that they can be capacitated. Then fund them. They are not funding them. Silver Ramaphosa was the chair of the BEE commission. He became one of the first beneficiaries. His brother-in-law, Patrice Mutsipe, became a beneficiary. Saki Matozo, an ANC guy, became a beneficiary. People like Trevor Manuel and his wife, Maria Ramos, became beneficiaries. People like Mzee Kumar, an ANC guy, became a beneficiary. And, and, and Dr. Anna Mahokong, who is one of the heads of the people that supply ESCOM today, they became beneficiaries. And we saw the rise of a black elite group that is politically connected. And it did not filter down to the majority of people. And this black elite has fundamentally not built black industry. Which is why today, as much as we've got BEE and black tenderpreneurs and all these black board members, we have mass black unemployment. White unemployment in this country is under 10%. It's about 8 to 9%. Unemployment for white people. A small group, of course. But we have to look at the numbers. 8% unemployment. Black people, on the other hand, have normal ages to youth, a 54 to 72% unemployment rate. This is thanks to the ANC that has failed because there is an agenda that they met at Codesa, they befriended the apartheid guy and they said, let's be rich together. You can come in and move in. And today we've got the economic freedom fighters that claim to fight for black people. But even they, Julius Malima, Floyd Shibambu, Moisen and Rose, live in suburbia. Their children go to private schools. They earn fat salaries, 100 to 150,000 rand a month. They claim to speak for the people and by and large, a big part of their messaging is for the people, but their lived reality is detached from the people. So as a white South African, you will never understand. You will never understand the psyche of a black person who wakes up in a shack in an informal settlement, who is unemployed, who has to go and queue for ARVs, who has to beg and stand in lines for grants. And then you want to tell them, oh, look at the ANC when they are like the RTP I live in, the ARVs I'm getting from the clinic. The fact that my child is NSFAS is thanks to the ANC. What has the DA ever done for me? And worse, I'm still processing the trauma of white people oppressing me. And every time I go into town, 
Every time I go into suburbia, I see white people in their cars. I see white children in private schools. I see white people with private health care. So don't you dare come fucking tell me as a black person, I must vote for a white person when white people have done nothing for me. In the Western Cape, places like Mitchell's Plain, the Cape Flats. Look at what the fuck those places look like and then come tell me about the DA. The DA has been running Johannesburg. Brilliant under Herman Mashaba. It looked like they were doing well. They got rid of Herman. Or Herman got rid of himself because he was like, you guys are racist. Musi Maimani the same. Now they lost Pumzile van Dam. They lost... Um, Pumzile van Dam. They lost Ulindiwe Masibu. So even your little black coconut... Oh, I like this DA is bullshit. So even black people that were like, maybe... They're like, but if you guys are losing privileged blacks who come from decent homes who live comfortable lives if they have issues with you who am i to trust you and whenever like i say the da fucks up which have, they've done in johannesburg they've done in Pretoria. today when you see potholes in gauteng that's da boy that is not anc so you can't keep saying oh it's the anc and the fact that you will keep saying but the anc rules but you won't say that in the western cape which you like you don't say oh but it's the ANC in leadership. That's why the Western Cape looks like you don't do that. It shows your fucking hypocrisy and your inconsistencies. And it shows your racism. And then you guys did the same with Andre the Raider. I actually didn't want to make this video too long. And I see I'm running out of time. So I'm going to cut this one. And maybe I'll make another one. I'm going to upload this one and I'll make another one. Because this is very important. The defense for Andre the Raider. Who got in for the job. Took it and failed. You are but they'll sabotage and you've never held black leaders at ESCOM to the same standard. Yeah, but it's, it's politics. But someone has never. Matsila Koko and Brian Mulifa stopped load shedding. They maintained the plants. You can find that online. Stop listening to the fucking media. Go on Google and search maintenance. Brian Mulifa and Matsila Koko. You will see they were maintaining the plants. They stopped load shedding. But you're like, they're corrupt. Andre Tereta, oh, but it was a dead horse. It was a poison chalice. He failed, but you're defending him. Why? Because he's white. The same way you defend the DA and Andre Tereta is the same way a lot of black people defend the ANC, Jacob Zuma, even when they are failing. You guys are one and the same person. You guys are the ones that are racially polarized and are the reason this country is fucked. The rest of us in the middle who are trying to be non-racialist, trying to work together, trying to look at merit and whatever, we suffer because of both sides, the racist whites and the racist blacks. Racist blacks that will keep voting for the ANC that is fucking them over. And racist whites that will keep voting for the DA and the Freedom Front Plus. Because they refuse to vote for black people. Because they believe black people are incompetent. And those black ANC people that you hate have rich white friends. They sit on the boards of companies. They live in your same fucking neighborhoods. They send their kids to the same schools as you. But there's something wrong with them. But there's nothing wrong with the white leaders. Who are the reason we are in this mess? They are the ones that enforced apartheid. They are the ones that are hoarding money, moving money overseas, etc. But no, we can explain. All of you guys are the fucking problem. It's upsetting. It's upsetting. I'm going to carry on with this message, but I hope I already I've set a, painted a picture of what's frustrating me and what's making me angry. Dear white South Africans, the majority of you, Look in the mirror, try and figure out what's wrong with you and try and figure out why. Understand why. Learn empathy. Learn perspective and try and understand why black people have got an issue with whiteness and white leaders even when there is a corrupt, destructive black leadership in power and why they will continue voting for it. Pen you all the black pen.